Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Prior Power Principles. We are at episode 21 and today's topic is prior and worship. We're so happy that you could join us. But before we begin, we'll ask Elder David to take us to the one that we love the best. Let's bow. Father in heaven, we just come to you and we just want to thank you that you invite us to come into your presence. Lord, we come humbly before you and we ask that you would cleanse us and forgive us of our sins. We, we thank you for, for giving us Jesus. Thank you for uniting us in him on the cross, that we are crucified with Christ. So, Father, I just ask, as you bring us into your presence now, that you would open the eyes of our understanding, that you would surround us with holy angels, that your spirit would take control of this prayer time, and that, that our testimony would bring glory to your name and that we would be drawn to him who gave himself completely for us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so it's time for testimonies. I mean, sometimes you're thinking, what shall I share? What shall I share? And, you know, the good thing is that you can whisper a word of prayer and the Lord will give you like the right thing to share to bless others who are listening. All right. So today I just want to share a very simple testimony about something that I learned during the, the, um, prayer, the camp meetings that I've been going to. And I think the second camp meeting that I went to, there was a special emphasis on making your home and uh, a little heaven on earth. Uh, and when we mean heaven on earth, just a replica of what heaven will be like, you know, just worshiping God. And today we're talking about worship, too, in connection with prayer. And I learned that, you know, the books we can read, you know, chat, I mean, I knew it before, but I hadn't been like very consistent. So I said, Lord, I need your help. And I started reading the book Child Guidance with my son. Um, who was five-year-old at the time, and we just like, you know, I prayed, and we were very consistent reading it every night before I go, and then I learned that you just read one paragraph at a time, and I would read one paragraph to him every night, and when I finished, I would explain sometimes just a sentence by sentence, and sometimes I didn't know, and I was like, Lord, help me to explain it in the simple way so that his little brain can understand, and, you know, as I explain it, these truths also um, they're impressed upon my heart. So I'm learning at the same time. And when I finished reading, the thing that struck me was that he was like, it's finished already. And I was like, yes, just, just one paragraph. And he was like, no, I want more. I want more. And it just gives me great joy that there are kids, you know, when we, when we pray to God and we said, Lord, I want you to make my home, you know, a little heaven on earth, you know, an Eden home, an Adventist home. Um, God hears our prayers and he, comes and he helps us and he sends his angels and helps and I've seen that in you know in in my re the response of my son so I pray that if you are praying the same prayer or if you haven't started yet that you will start and trust God he will make your home a little heaven on earth amen, amen. I like that <laughs> <laughs> I had something interesting happen I woke up uh it was two days ago and I and the first thing I do is is uh it's dark in my room, so I just pu I pull up my phone so I can read my Bible in the dark, right, without turning on the lights. And uh, the Lord guided me to Isaiah uh, 56, and I was reading through it, and 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 something that that kept coming coming out to me was was talking or that made an impression on me was about the foreigner who comes to the land. It says anyone who's a foreigner or the, or the son of a foreigner who seeks the Lord, uh, they weren't supposed to be able to enter the temple. Um, it's talking about the people in the Old Testament who couldn't come into the temple. And yet in Isaiah 55, it says, anyone who desires to seek the Lord with their whole heart and loves the Lord, they can come into his temple. And, but I was impressed with the foreigners and that, that we are to be a blessing to the foreigners and people who who don't always have a, have an easy time, you know, coming mm -hmm. to a new country. It's not easy coming to a new country. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got up and I went for my run that morning. And as I was running, I saw this car pass, pass by me. 
And, and I could tell immediately that these people were kind of lost, right? You, you can see the look on their face. And they drove down the street and then they came back. And, and finally, I, I, I said, you know, they're not finding what they're looking for. So, and I, they, they appeared to be Mexican. They were Spanish speaking. So I went up to their car and I said, you're looking for a house? They said, yes, they didn't speak real good English. And so, so then they handed me their phone and on the phone was a text that had an address on it. Well, they were on the right street and, and the, the uh, address number was 1875, eight, 1873. And so I, I looked at the next, I said, hold on, let me find out. And I ran to the next mailbox across the street because the, the houses are spread out here. So, and, and it was uh, 1837. And so I said, well, it should be up that way. So they turn around and they, and they drove back that way. And I start, kept running, right? And all of a sudden I realized they already went down there and they couldn't find that house. And, and then, I, then the thought came to me, I wonder if that was a dyslexic, dyslexic moment where somebody got 1873 mixed up with 1837, right? So I, I turned around and I came back and I, and I uh, was standing there by the house when they came by again. And I said, did you find it? And they said, no. I said, hold on. I said, let me go f talk to these people. It may be just this house right here. So I walked up there and uh, knocked on the door. No one answered the door, but there was a contractor's truck in the driveway and there was a, a, a city inspector there. So I know they're doing some construction, construction there. And then later on, I saw a tub that they'd pulled out and on the porch, there was some uh, cabinets for a new bathroom. And so now I know this is probably the house, but I didn't know for sure because I didn't get to talk to anybody. So I went out there and I said, I think this is your house. So they're doing a new bathroom, but it, they, were, they were not sure. So I said, well, let me check again. So I ran up to the house and and this time the contractor came out and I said, you looking for some tile guys? They had tile, tile tools in the back of their car, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, they, been, they were supposed to be here a long time ago. I said, they, somehow they got, somebody gave them the wrong address. So I went out and told them they came in and they thanked me and I left, you know, and I just felt like God put me there. I knew when mm -hmm. I talked to those guys that I was supposed to help them because mm -hmm. they were lost and and I knew the neighborhood and I know all the neighbors anyway you know we we know all of the neighbors on the whole the mm -hmm. whole subdivision because we have a garden and we went give handing out <laughs> garden produce to everybody that was how we met everybody and so uh but but the point is God prepped me for this in my morning worship and that's what mm -hmm. Jesus used to go through in his morning communion time with God God would prepare him for the events of the day. He would prepare him so that he knew exactly what to do. And it was interesting. Soon as I saw these guys, I knew I needed to help them. Mm. And that probably saved them from losing their job. Amen. So it's not easy being in a country, a new country, mm -hmm. but it's especially hard if you don't speak the language well. And, and I just want as Christians, to be able to be a blessing to others like Jesus was. And I know that when we submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit, he will guide our days. He will arrange divine appointments and, mm -hmm. and make us a blessing to others. Amen. Praise God. We have a universal language when we speak to our God <laughs> right. by prayer. And that's what we're going to be talking about right now, prayer and worship. And, you know, when I, when I read through this, you know, it says that we should, you know, as Christians, we, are, we should have the desire to go where prayer is. You know, just like when you're at home, if you're hungry, you would go where the food is, right? <laughs> and I'm so, I've seen several uh, videos circulating throughout this pandemic of people going to the food and restraining themselves, some funny, some serious, but, you know, going where <laughs> you need that, you know, craving, you know, ice cream or pie or whatever. So <laughs> <laughs> probably more than um, several times in an hour. So I believe we can adapt the same to prior. Go where um, we know prior is. And, you know, now it's the pandemic where we can't worship publicly in the church, but we can go to God, you know, even when we're cooking, when we're um 
ironing the clothes. I mean, I don't like to iron, but I have to believe those who are ironing while you're ironing the clothes, you can do that. If you're washing, doing laundry, <laughs> cooking, you know, just send up a prayer to God. And that that is what I got from reading the first part there, you know, seeking, um, going where prayer is. And it also talked about, you know, like morning worship, you know, trying to have the the morning worship and the evening worship. And I'll talk more a little bit about that later on. Yeah, on uh, page 203, there was an interesting um, uh, paragraph here. It says, all should feel it a Christian duty to pray short in public, right? This is talking about prayer in the worship service. Mm -hmm. Tell the Lord just what you want without going all over the world. In <laughs> private prayer, all have the privilege of praying as long as they desire and of being explicit as they please. They can pray for all their relatives and friends. The closet is the place to tell all the private difficulties and trials and temptations. Mm -hmm. A common meeting of worship uh, to worship God is not the place to open the privacies of the heart. Mm -hmm. Then it says something that this is so easy to fall into. And I've, and I can, have caught myself doing this before. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> What is the object of assembling together? Is it to inform God and to instruct him by telling him all we know in prayer? Um, we meet together to edify one another and by an interchange of thoughts and feelings to gather strength and light to encourage by uh, becoming acquainted with one another's hopes and aspirations. Mm -hmm. And by our earnest, heartfelt prayers, Offered up in faith, we receive refreshment and vigor from the source of our strength. These meetings should be most precious in seasons and should, most precious seasons should, should, should be made interesting to all who relish. There are some, I fear, who do not take their troubles to God in private prayer, but reserve them for the prayer meeting and, and do their prayer for several days. Okay. <laughs> The, the point that I was going to make, I see I was thinking of another quotation here that's coming on the next page, but uh, sometimes in our prayers, we, I, have you ever heard someone say, and Lord, you know how, <laughs> you know, in our prayers, informing God, Lord, you know how my brother is, is going astray and, and uh, how he needs you and says, that's not the best way to pray. Ask God exactly what you need. Instead of telling God all the, what the problems are that he already knows, say, mm -hmm. Lord, I ask that you would bring my brother back. Actually, praying for our family is not the best place to do in, in the prayer meetings or in the church service, right? Mm -hmm. So um, unless uh, sometimes we do prayer requests and people ask for prayers for their uh, relatives or something, maybe I would do that. But I don't pray for my children. I don't pray for my family uh, when I'm doing the prayer in the service. Mm. Yeah, so I, the other part I talked about was the morning and the evening worship. And it says here, let small companies assemble in the evening at noon or in the early morning to study the Bible. Let them have a season of prayer. And what does the season of prayer does? Prayer strengthen, enlighten, and, and sanctifies. And it's, this is brought about by the Holy Spirit. You know, when, when we pray, we should just use simple words. And I, I believe we've said that, in, you know, in previous um, episodes, yeah. use simple words, not those. I mean, it's good to, to know the vocabulary, but, you know, the persons who are hearing you, use simple words. You know, this will bring more comfort and joy to the soul, it says, than all the pleasant instruments of music that could be brought into the churches. Christ will come into your hearts. It is by this means only that you can maintain your integrity. Not just, you know, using, telling your experience in simple words. And we're talking about praying, you know, praying to strengthen and to enlighten and to sanctify the soul brought about by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now, this is, this is the one that I was thinking of, um, where it says, I've caught myself doing these very, some of these very things. Um, mm. From the light which I have received, you'll see that quote, that from the light I have received, talking about prayer quite often. Um, it says, our meetings should be spiritual and social and not too long. 
reserve pride, vanity, fear of man should be left at home. It's easy for us, is it not, to be concerned about what people think of us while we're praying? And, here's, and this is what it's saying. It says, fear of man should be left at home. There was a time when I went to a meeting. It was uh, not at an Adventist church, which you'll, you'll understand. Um, but it was, it was more a, um, a Jewish type service. And there they have people that, that would do this like a dance. It, was, it wasn't dancing like we think of. Uh, the way the Jews do it, it's an expression to God in, in motion. It's a communication to God uh, through mm -hmm. movement. It's, it's more like uh, when you see the blind people and they do uh, hand gestures for uh, talking. Yeah. It's more like that. It's actually communication to God, right? You know, um, but so they were doing this and, and I saw this, this uh, young girl and I, and when I, I saw there was like, there was probably five people up there doing this all choreographed like, but when I saw her, I knew immediately in my spirit that she was different than all the rest. I could tell in my spirit that she was doing this completely unto the Lord and was totally oblivious that there was anybody else in there. I just, I just knew this and it literally brought tears to my eyes. It was so touching. Mm -hmm. and, and later on after the meeting, I saw her and I said, I could tell the Holy Spirit just showed me that you were doing that just unto the Lord like there was no one else. And she said, oh, I'm so glad because I was petrified. She said, I didn't want to be up there. I wasn't professional like these other people. And, and she said, Lord, I'll do this for you, but I just can't do this in front of these people. And you could tell there was a, a literal uh, spirit of surrender. And like she was in the presence of God and communicating directly to him. And it literally had an impact on, uh, I could see that, you know, in my spirit, mm -hmm. I connected with that. So it's easy to, uh, when we're praying, to focus on what other people might think of us. Mm -hmm. That we can give to Jesus. And, and we have to always check ourselves. And the Lord's good. You know, when I read through this, it was like the Lord checking me. How often do you, are, are you focused on, you know, what others might think? And I guess I've caught myself doing that before. Mm -hmm. And so it's been always, if you want to have powerful prayers, come to Jesus as if no one else hears you at all and talk to him as though you're right there in his presence. You are in his presence because um, we are brought boldly before the throne of grace. Amen. You know, it says we should educate our minds and we have to do this to love the Bible to love the prayer meeting, to love the hour of meditation, and above all, the hour when the soul communes with God. Yes. Here's mm -hmm. another point that's, that's very important here. It says, let those who pray and those who speak pronounce their words properly and speak in clear, distinct, even tones. Mm -hmm. Prayer, if proper, properly offered, is a power for good. It is one of the means used by the Lord to communicate to the people the precious treasures of truth. But prayer is not what it should be uh, because of the defective voices of those who utter it. Now, listen to this. Satan rejoices when the prayers offered to God are almost inaudible. Mm. I have many prayer partners, but two of my favorites, two of the people I love to pray with the most, uh, one of them speaks very softly and often puts her head down between her hands, you know, against the pew or something like that. And you just can't hear. And I'm always blessed by their prayers, but I can't hear their prayers. And here it says the enemy is exultant when we don't pray out loud. I have another friend and she's, she's one of my favorite prayer people to pray with because I just love the way she communes with God. But so, so many times she'll start praying with her head down like this on the chair and you can't hear what she's saying. But then it was like, as she starts to pray, it's like the spirit of God takes over and she sits up and then pretty soon she's, her face is just lit up and she's praising God and, and, and you can hear clearly then. Mm -hmm. But it's easy for us to, to um, be negligent 
and, and not be uh, cognizant that people do need to hear. People are blessed when they hear you pray. Mm-hmm. You may be shy and worried about how you don't know how to pray. That's why you will hear me often pray, Lord, we know not how to pray as we ought. We really don't. But if mm-hmm. you surrender your heart to Jesus, when you, when you put your heart out to him and just pray from your heart to God, practice mm-hmm. by yourself. When you're, if you practice this by yourself, you won't have any problem in public. Mm-hmm. You'll That's find true. that people are blessed by your prayers when you do that. Yeah. You know, as you said, uh, when you were reading, you felt like God was like directly talking to you. It's the same way I felt. And one of the thing is what is in regard to the length of the prayers that we pray. And it says here that the prayer of Jesus is simple and talking about the prayers, especially that he taught his disciples, the famous Our Father who art in heaven prayer. He says it's simple, it's clear, it's comprehensive, and yet not long and spiritless as are the dry prayers that are often offered in public. It's short to the point. And it says here, a few minutes is long enough for any ordinary public petition. And I believe this is one principle that I hope that if you you don't get anything, that you will get this from today's uh, episode. Yes, yes, that's good, yes. And here's another one too. There... um, it seems like society and religion in general have have tried to avoid and get away from this awful God who's a judgmental, burn you in hell forever and ever type of God, mm-hmm. and rightfully so. However, uh, it seems like pendulums never s- swing from one side and stop in the middle. They often swing clear to the other side, mm-hmm. and and so you you have uh, the other side of that is God of God being a fearful and awesome God and so holy that we can't approach him uh, is that you can jump up in his, uh, you know, go run up to the throne and jump in his lap and cuddle with him. Um, I have, I have someone that would, that was telling me that. And it's like, even the angels cover their faces and cover mm-hmm. their feet and bow down in the presence of God. He is so holy, so powerful, Thank so, uh, I mean, all created beings just can, can barely stand in his presence. So while we don't want to see God as a judgmental, vindictive, and uh, waiting to just throw us into the pits of hell at the w- slightest mistake, that's an error on one side. Too much familiarity is also another mistake. And let me just read this quote. It says, some think it a mark of humility to pray to God in common matter as if talking with a human being. They profane his name by needlessly and irreverently irreverently mingling with their words, God Almighty. Awful, sacred words which should never pass the lips except in subdued tones and with a feeling of awe. God, we need to we need to not lose the impression of of uh, we are just mere creatures and simple ones at that to come into the sight of a holy God without mm-hmm. an intercessor it would be complete death it would be instant death and He has invited us to come into His presence but only covered by the blood of Jesus so we come very humbly mm-hmm. before His throne. Yes, you know, we're talking about prayer and worship, and we just want to, I just wanted to point out something that I, you know, have been impressed by. It says here at family worship, let children, let the children take a part, let all bring their Bibles and, you know, each read a verse or two, then let some familiar hymn be sung, followed by a prayer. So, you know, these are the steps here. And it says, you know, the prayer should be simple, earnest, and, um, comprehensive and it says you know long prosy talks and prayers are out of place anywhere and especially in the social meeting they weary the angel as well as the people who listen to them and I was like I was a little bit shocked I was like wow if the prayers are long then the angels get weary too I never I never I don't I don't think I've ever thought of that I (laughs) so when I read it I was like wow they weary the angel as well as the people who listen to them So it says one or two minutes is long enough for any ordinary prayer. 
So, you know, this is something that also myself, I will be taking away from this episode also. <laughs> two, two minutes is actually a pretty long prayer. You actually time yourself, you know, and let, not, not in your closet, you know, yeah. not in, in your room. That's not long, but, but in public, yes. Yeah. But I think she's talking about the dry prayers, you know, I mean, you know, as well as I have, there's been prayers where they go on and on and, and no souls are being fed and blessed. And it's wearisome. And that's what she's talking about. If the spirit is moving, um, a five minute prayer when the spirit is moving is, is a blessing, a different story. Right. Yes. <laughs> but, but still it's, I prefer when people pray, one or two paragraph prayers and then and you can pray more than once and and move it around the circle and people can can join in and keep it short and mm -hmm. then you can pray more than once if you need to if you're praying like a prayer meeting where there's we're praying for an hour say or something like that yeah because she was talking about like older people who sometimes you know like have to bow down and you know bowing down for you know uh, several minutes it's, it's oh hard. it's not yeah it's not people are feeble Right, yeah, especially the older ones among us, yes. Another thing it was mentioning here, and that is the importance of kneeling when we pray. Um, over and over, uh, the Bible talks about um, Daniel kneeling, um, Says both in public and in private worship, is it is our privilege to bow on our knees before God when we offer our petitions to Him. Jesus, our example, kneeling down and praying, Luke 22:41. Of His disciples, it was recorded that they too kneeling down and praying, Acts 9:40. Paul declared, "I bow the knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ," Ephesians 3:14. Mm -hmm. And confessing before God the sins of Israel, Ezra knelt. Ezra 9.5, Daniel, kneeling upon his knees three times a day and praying and giving thanks to God, Daniel 6.10. I always prefer kneeling, although mm -hmm. sometimes uh, when you're up front, you, if you don't have a mic, you have to stand. But I always feel very self-conscious. And I, in, my, in my mind and in my spirit, I'm kneeling before God, even if I have to stand on my feet to be in front of the mic because we never want to be presumptive in the presence of God. I know as Adventists, we always try to kneel, even when, even at a camp meetings when, you know, yes. it's just grass and dirt, you know, we yes. still kneel down. <laughs> yeah, it says here that um, in every family, there should be a fixed time for morning and evening worship. So, um, you know, if you're going to do like 7 a.m. for morning worship, stick to 7 a.m. If you're going to do 7 p.m. for morning worship, you know, stick to that. Have a fixed time when you have your morning and your evening worship. And preferably before the fast is broken. So before you eat, you know, before breakfast time, where it says here to thank the Heavenly Father for his protection during the night and to ask him for his help and guidance, guidance sorry, and watch care during the day and it talks about you know coming to the evening how fitting it is for the parents and the children to um, gather once more before him and thank him for the blessings of the day that is past um yeah i'll say i'll say a little bit more because there's something that i don't totally agree with that i read but i'll wait until after you share to share that one okay um uh, yeah i just have one more and i'm this is my last one. It mm -hmm. says, uh, the prayers of faithful worshipers will be heard. The ministry of the word will be effective. Uh, this is talking about if, if all uh, bow, you know, humbly before God to, on their knees. It says, the lifeless attitude of worshipers in the house of God is one great reason why the ministry is not, a, not more productive of good. Mm -hmm. Melody of song poured forth from many hearers in clear, distinct utterance is one of God's instrumentalities in work of saving souls. <clears throat> All the service should be conducted with sol solemnity and awe, as if the visible presence of, of the master assembles. Uh, that's one thing you'll notice uh, if you've read anything of the revivals that go on. Mm -hmm. In a revival, the presence of Jesus actually comes down 
and people are very much aware of the presence of Jesus. And there is a sense of awe. In fact, you read uh, Acts chapter 2, and it says, after the Holy Spirit came down, a sense of awe or fear came on upon all of them. Mm -hmm. um, when we're in a Laodicean condition, we lose that sense of awe. Mm. And, and, it, and even if we, we try to do it, it's somewhat artificial. We need to be revived. We need the presence of Jesus to literally come. We need the Holy Spirit to fill our, our services so that uh, we understand the present, what the presence of Jesus uh, is. It will lift us up. It will change everything in, in regard to worship. Our young people will not be walking away from church when the presence of Jesus is there. That I will guarantee you. Yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah, so my last thought too. It's saying the father or in his absence, the mother should conduct the worship. So I didn't totally agree with this because I believe that even if the father is present, present the they can take turns to lead the worship exercise and you can share your thoughts um, on this. So it says the father or in his absence, the mother should conduct the worship, selecting a portion of scripture that is interesting and easily understood. So I wanted to, to, to just share this principle that when you do your devotional worship exercise, it's good to select a portion of scripture that is interesting and at the same time, very easy to understand by all. And the other thing, um, that I wanted to share along with this is that a little thought given to preparation for it, talking about the devotional worship times, whether the morning worship or evening worship, will enable you to make it full of interest and profit. And I thought that, you know, there there is more that we can do, especially if you have children, you know, give some thought to your morning worship. So maybe you could make a fun activity where they have to search for some, some cards and they have to say one or two things about something. So make it fun and make it interesting for the kids. And I believe the Holy Spirit will, will give us the wisdom to do this. So what are your thoughts on that, Elder David, that first one? It says the father or in his absence, the mother should conduct the worship. Well, I think God has, has delegated to the man to be the priest of the home. Now, that doesn't mean that he should do it all the time. I think that he should have the children do it some, too. And, it, and the wife learn to lead out in worship. But it's his responsibility to make sure that that happens on a regular basis. And the reason why I say that, not only because the Bible lays it out, but that men, men have often neglected their role. Mm -hmm. And, and oftentimes the women are forced to come in and take the place and, and be the spiritual leader because the man is negligent and not maintaining his relationship with God, not maintaining uh, his uh, place of making sure that his children are raised up after, after him in, in loving the Lord with all their hearts, minds, and strengths. I think that without, when, when the responsibility is taken away from the man, they just don't do well. And I think that our society often uh, takes that responsibility away from them, and they're glad to secede and, and let that go, but the, the end result is not a, a godly man. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. So it doesn't mean that, you know, the father should always lead out. We understand that he, God makes him the priest of the household, you know, the husband, you know, uh, forming a band then so to speak of the of the household but of course yes the mother can take lead responsibility but you know what he should also recognize his his wife and his children the need for them to grow spiritually and for them mm -hmm. to to contribute what they can contribute that he can't contribute um ellen white makes the statement that the influence of a woman in the home is much greater than that of the man women need to recognize that. And mm -hmm. even though the man is to be the spiritual leader, the man would be a fool or foolish, <laughs> would be foolish if he neglected to understand that the woman has a greater influence in the home than he does and not mm -hmm. utilize that. Mm -hmm. That's my view. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, the mother is the queen of the household. That's right. The man is the one that, you know, he's a house, house band. House band. You know? <laughs> 
All right, so we're moving on to our segment of PER, and, you know, it's my favorite time. You know, I really enjoy this chapter, Elder David, you know, talking about prayer and worship. These are just two holy themes that we could go on and on and on and share so much, even more than what is written here of our personal experience. But as they say, all good things come to an end. Yeah. So <laughs> we will pause here and just um, pray with you. We know, you know, many of us are going through a tough time right now, especially parents. Um, who are working from home, maybe a little bit frustrated because teachers give so ho- so much homework like myself. No, I'm just joking. I don't, <laughs> I don't give a lot of homework, but I do believe that their parents struggling in that regard. And, you know, just, just the whole, you know, whole upside down of our world, so to speak, because of the pandemic and many parents are frustrated. So we want to, you know, I'm going to be praying for parents today um, during this, you know, times, and especially for the times ahead. And Elder David, as he shared in his testimony about, you know, his devotion that he had and how God was, you know, directing him to, um, you know, probably persons, you know, immigrants within our, you know, how tough it is, you know, just to go into a country, you know, having that, you know, language barrier can be very challenging. I've lived in a country um, where I didn't speak the the, the language so I could understand and share in what you were saying and so Elder David's going to pray for the immigrants in our country that they will be tr- uh, you know treated well you know as you said so let's let's uh, let's bow our heads and pray to God and we will definitely offer a prayer for you too even for your unspoken requests we know we all need the hand of God in our lives amen yes amen so let us pray Father in heaven we're so thankful that you love us We are so thankful that we are not left on our own. We have a father that is watching over the world. Even though there is chaos, there is natural disasters, fires, uh, earthquakes um, in diverse places. Lord, we know that your hand still upholds the world and you have the world in your hand. Lord, we thank you so much for who you are, for um, revealing yourself through nature, oh God, um, through your word, through you know, through different means. And we thank you, Lord, that you are the great almighty creator, Lord, but not only the creator, you are the redeemer of mankind. And Lord, you love the created beings with so much love that you sent your holy son to die for us, to redeem us back to you. Lord, at this time, they are many parents who are struggling, Lord, at home, very frustrated, Um, in their hearts, they do not understand many things. But God, I pray that this moment through your Holy Spirit, you will give comfort. I pray that even through just um, a word from the Bible that you will bring comfort, uh, maybe through an individual, a mother, a grandmother, an uncle, a relative, a friend, a co-worker, that a nurse, someone that they run in contact with, that they will receive some strength, some guidance, some comfort um, from the words that you speak through your agents, Lord. We thank you so much for what you're doing in the lives of parents, Lord. I pray that you give them wisdom in helping their kids who are doing online learning. Uh, pray for wisdom in teaching, you know, just the whole responsibility of being mothers and father during this pandemic, especially with those who are at home can be challenging. And so Lord, we are um, petitioning your throne that Lord, you be near to these families, Lord, help them, oh God, to put their trust and their confidence only in you. For you promise that with you, all things are possible. I pray that you will keep the parents' mind focused on heaven, Lord, because once they're focused on heaven, they will have that calm disposition and their children will recognize that they've been with Jesus and they too will receive of the Holy Spirit. Bless the families, Lord. Give us a foretaste of heaven, Lord. Help us to recognize that this world is not our final home and that you have gone to prepare a place for us and that, Lord, you're coming back. You're coming back to take us, Lord, to be with you. Remind us, O oh God, of the precious promises whenever we're feeling low that we can hold on to them. And please, Lord, remind us also that you will never leave us and you will never forsake us even when we go through the fire and the water. You know, even with the three Hebrew boys, you were with them. And so you will be with us until the end of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you that you've invited us into your presence. And Lord, I just want to, I just want to come with all those who are listening. And I just uh, take them in the hands of faith, Father, just like mm-hmm. 
uh, the friends brought their paralyzed friend to Jesus and they opened the roof of the house because he couldn't get there himself, Lord. I, I just want to lift up those who may be feeling like they can't come to Jesus for some reason or another on their own, that feel stuck, that feel like uh, they're paralyzed, spiritually paralyzed, and don't know why, Lord. I just ask that I, I want to lift them and I want to place them before Jesus right now, just like the friends did. Lord, we just want to tear open the roof and we want to drop them and bring them and present them before Jesus. Lord, we just want to thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us, that Jesus said, said your sins are forgiven. And Father, I just ask that you would bring healing and restoration and hope. Father, you said hope does not disappoint. For the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit whom you have given us. Lord, I just ask that you would give us the Holy Spirit, that the joy of the Lord would, would rush in to take the place of uh, the anxieties of the world and the frustrations that uh, all the, the uh, strife and, and things going on in, uh, in the news, Lord. Thank you that you can lift us above that, lift us into your presence. Father, I just want to lift up those who may have come to our country and maybe don't feel like they belong. Mm. Lord, I just ask that you would bless us with the wisdom and insight to know how to be a blessing to them. Yes, Lord, whether it be immigrants or just somebody who feels like an outcast, Lord, I just ask that our hearts would go out to them, that you would prepare us in our morning devotion time, prepare our hearts with a word in due season to those who are weary. Lord, Prepare our hearts by allowing us to lay aside our own plans to be a blessing to others. Yes. Father, you said in Isaiah 58 that, that where the people, uh, you were to show God's people their sins, and, and yet they were seeking God every day and, and delighting to know the Lord. They were fasting and they were praying, but it seemed like you didn't notice. Lord, I, for those people, you said, is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and to give yourself uh, to the homeless? Father, I said, then, you, then you said, then your light will spring forth like the dawn and your recovery will speedily spring forth. Then you will call and I will answer. You will you will cry and I will say, here I am. Lord, soon as we start living to bless others instead of worrying about ourselves, you will be right there to bless us and to, and to reveal the goodness, your goodness to us. Father, I just ask that that, that, that blessing of blessing others, that, that heart of Jesus that lived to bless those around him, who saw the people like sheep without a shepherd and his heart was moved with compassion. Lord, I ask that you would make us partakers of your divine nature. Give us that heart, Jesus. And I'm asking that you would, uh, as, we, as we submit to your spirit, as we, as we connect with your heart to bless others, Lord, I just ask that when we call, we know you will answer and we will hear your voice. We will know your word. Lord, I just ask that you would Open your word to us every morning that we would be blessed as we, as we partake of the heavenly manna that it came down every morning where Jesus said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Lord, I just ask that as we open your word that we would be fed from that heavenly manna, that heavenly bread with Jesus. We pray in his precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, any final thoughts, Elder David, before we go? Ah, I didn't have any, any that I thought of. <laughs> I, I did enjoy, I did enjoy this uh, talk because it's so important. Um, we started uh, at, at the Five Oaks Church, we started meeting um, before about 30 minutes before uh, the Sabbath school started and we had a prayer time. And, mm -hmm. and you know what? It was so special. It was so precious. 
it was, I wouldn't miss it for anything. It was, it was like I woke up every Sabbath morning and I couldn't wait to join my friends to pray on <laughs> Sabbath morning. Yeah. And I really miss that. Mm. Yeah. I wish that on everybody. Yes, me too. I was just, yeah, I remember uh, speaking to you that I missed the in-person worship, you know, it's yes. just so different with just being on the screen and seeing, you know, your brothers and sisters on the screen, but you can't hug them, you can talk to them. I know. You know? <laughs> so it's different. Yes. Uh, well, my final thoughts would be like, you know, I hope that you guys will get back to, you know, having morning worship and evening worship is just so refreshing, no matter what you're going through, when you get into the when you get into prayer, you get in connection in the presence of God. And when you get into the presence of God, no matter what is happening, it will be laid away. So just try to have maybe, I'll suggest maybe 7 a.m. in the morning and 7 p.m., you know, whatever works for you, but try to make it um, consistent and um, I wish you God's blessings. <laughs> Amen. All right. Thank you. And we'll see you uh, next week. Keep praying for us. And remember, if you have a prayer request, you can send them to prayerpowerprinciples at gmail.com and we will be praying for you. God bless you all. God bless you all. <laughs>